In 1910, an epidemiological study began tracking America's sleep habits. And it just so happened that the data came out just in the nick of time. Three years later, Thomas Edison released the first tungsten filament light bulb and the world's sleep patterns would never be the same. Before then, most ordinary people still lit their houses with comparatively expensive candles and whale oil lamps, which meant that their sleep pattern still largely mirrored the movement of the sun. The light bulbs that did exist were expensive vacuum pumped affairs that gradually grew dimmer over time. Edison's invention radically altered the way we lit our world, quite literally at the flip of a switch. The baseline study that came out before the tungsten bulb reported that ordinary people slept a full nine hours almost every night, mostly going to bed just after sunrise and getting up just after dawn. The electric light bulb made it that much easier and cheaper to stay up late into the evening and removed a full hour and a half of sleep from every living person on earth. Today, Americans average between seven and eight hours of shut eye a night. That's 547 fewer hours of sleep per year and more than 45,000 lost hours of sleep over a lifetime. Edison's invention radically transformed one of the most fundamental characteristics of human experience that had been with us since the dawn of evolution. Every living creature until that point on the planet matched its biological cycles to the rotation of the earth in relation to the sun. We slept longer during winter nights and spent less time in bed when the sun burned bright in the summer. This radical shift in activity pattern swept the world in just a handful of years and fostered almost immediate physiological changes. Edison himself was not a fan of sleep. He claimed to never need more than four or five hours of rest per night, which, if true, would make him a statistical outlier for healthy sleepers. But he correctly predicted that the electric light bulb would usher in a new era of global productivity. He proclaimed that his invention would let us break our shackles from predictable patterns of nature and allow us to work longer hours in booming factory towns and focus on efforts that would actually make our lives better. Well, better in terms of finances, maybe. He was pretty sure that electric lighting made people smarter, too. In his biography, he recounted a drive he took through Switzerland while the electric grid was still connecting up, writing, I visited little towns and villages and noted the effect of artificial light on the inhabitants, where water power and electric light had been developed, everyone seemed normally intelligent. Where these appliances did not exist and the natives went to bed with the chickens staying there till daylight, they were less intelligent. Edison, of course, was not a psychologist, and I have some serious questions about his scientific rigor in measuring the intelligence of people from the window of his Rolls Royce as he flew past them on his way to a fancy hotel. It's also important to at least mention that Edison's analysis almost certainly served his own bottom line. More light bulbs meant more money for his electric empire. One thing was certain, though. The electric light bulb changed the world forever. It was just as radical a transformation in human activity and biology as the internet was at the end of last century and what AI will likely do in the decades to come. What we still haven't reckoned with, however, is how that change in total sleep has altered the quality of our waking lives. Are we really better off? Does reducing total sleep by more than an hour a day change us in some fundamental way? Well, it took us almost 80 years to answer that question. In 1900, a specialist in psychobiology at the National Institute of Mental Health named Thomas Ware wanted to see if electric illumination sparked permanent changes in human biology or if you remove light bulbs from their environment, people would revert to an evolutionary sleep pattern. The plan was to send people back in time by restricting light to only times when the sun was up and to keep his subjects in total darkness from dusk until dawn. What he found was nothing short of jaw-dropping. In the first three weeks of his study, his subjects slept moderately more than normal, adding about an hour to their sleep routines every day. This was pretty close to how humans slept pre-1910, when people used candles at night if they wanted to stay up and do things. And it was also what Ware had expected before he began this project. But then, in the fourth week, something magical happened. 
Once their body is adjusted to a natural sleep pattern, the subject's nighttime sleep cycles spontaneously divided into two segments of approximately four hours each, with a two-hour quiet rest period phase in between. This gap in the night is what has become known recently as the second sleep. In other words, people spent a good portion of the night awake. Today, if you wake up in the middle of the night, most people will think that they're suffering from some sort of insomnia, because we've been accustomed to the idea of strictly regimented times of wakefulness and downtime. It sort of matches with this factory idea. You're supposed to work during the day and sleep during the night so that you can be a productive person. But Ware discovered that this break in the middle of the night was in fact an entire alternate state of human consciousness, something that exists between the dream world and the waking one. This is where humans have a chance to think abstractly and maybe even gain spiritual insights. More than that, he also found that during these sleep phases and awake phases, humans had elevated levels of the hormone prolactin, which is the same chemical that bonds mothers to infants after birth and is critical in developing long-term emotional bonds with your spouse or other partner. Without a second sleep, many of us are missing this type of consciousness that was with us throughout all of history and even our whole evolutionary past. Electric light bulbs got rid of it. It burned it away. Now, I've already done a deep dive into prolactin in an interview that I had with the author of the book, Waking Up to the Dark, whose name was Clark Strand. And you should definitely listen to that if you want to do a deeper dive into the magic of the second sleep. Suffice it to say, the electric light bulb radically transformed the way that humans interact with their environment and stuck us into an eternally lit world and constant summer. We've lost our connection to darkness and the unique psychological states that it enables. Worse than that, the trend to constant lighting with phone screens spewing blue light into our brains just a few inches from our faces, creating all sorts of daytime signals that is making it even more difficult for the average person to achieve restorative rest and emotional processing that dreams afford us. If you want to learn more about those things, I've put together an entire playlist here on YouTube so that you can drink deeply into the somnolescent waters of your own unconscious mind. I also have a new book out called Dream, the Art and Science of Slumber that I sincerely hope will not keep you up at night. Until next time, remember, turn off those lights because you are what you dream.